So here's the sword we're going to be making right here. have seen it at the beginning but just want to show it to you again first of all um, I have a Teflon mat right here but I just have this um, little board it's just aluminum foil on top of cardboard in case you don't have a Teflon mat the Teflon mats better because this is you know easily cut up and everything but the clay doesn't stick to this as bad as some other surfaces so at least you'll be able to get it off easily and let's see other things we're gonna need first off um, the clay you see I got some right here already the clay that we're gonna use for this one is cost clay sculpt I'm using a uh, medium firm and uh, I just want to say straight out generally speaking I don't like cost clay <laughs> For my style of sculpting, like specifically like figure sculpting, I find it to be, even in the medium firm, it's a little softer than I like, and it's definitely way too sticky for me. But I do love it for making all kinds of props because, um, you know, props can have little delicate areas, especially like for something like a sword. You always would have to worry about the point, and, you know, if you drop it or... Um, even when you're just working on it, sometimes this is an area that you might accidentally break off. But with the cost clay, since it stays flexible after you bake it, that's not a problem. So even if I drop this, I could probably throw it. It's not gonna break. So I do like it for that. So that's why I suggest you use this one. If you don't have it, that's fine too. You don't have to use it. Um, you could also use just something that's going to be really tough, really hard, like um, epoxy sculpt is a good option. Or if you don't have anything else, you can just use any regular polymer clay. Other thing we're going to need to give you the structure for the sword is music wire. Okay, that's what this is. This is um, 0.047 in size. And you might be wondering why of all wires am I going to tell you to use music wire? Let's see, it does say music wire. I'm telling you to use music wire because it's really, really tough. So here's a piece that's already cut. It really isn't very bendable. And that will keep you from accidentally bending your sword. If you do find the, mu the music wire, just letting you know this is really really tough wire and you're gonna want some really heavy pliers to cut it and even with these things I still had to put a whole lot of pressure on it and it kind of dented my blades so don't use you know your really really good pliers <laughs> and definitely don't try to do it with jewelry pliers because you will kill them seriously you need something really heavy. You could probably maybe use something that's made for memory wire, but definitely you want something heavy duty. Also, might seem like fairly common sense, but um, a ruler for measuring, or you can have um, a digital caliper if you've got one of these already, a uh, pencil, or something just something to write with, pencil, pen, doesn't matter. Um, craft knife, tissue blade. One of these will be really good for um, making sure that we cut our blade straight. Whatever your favorite sculpting tool is, this one is mine. Scissors. We will also need some aluminum foil tape. If you sculpt figures or art dolls, you might already have some of this. Um, it's not regular aluminum foil, it is tape, so it's got a backing on it. And um, this is a major part of this, so you do have to get this. Also, for this version of the sword, because this is kind of like a quick and easy version, um, we're going to be needing beads. These are 
for this size sword I used six millimeter beads. These are metal beads and I suggest you use metal or um, metal or ceramic. They don't have to be silver, they can be any color you want. Oh, you can even use wooden beads actually. The only thing you need to stay away from is acrylic beads because they will melt. <laughs> okay, so also you'll need a slider bead. Here you see that. This one's like a little wing pattern. Doesn't really matter what the shape is, you just need it to have only single hole, not two. And just some kind of shape like this, even if it's just like a triangle or like a chevron kind of shape. Even It could even be a rectangle, just a plain rectangle with a single hole through it, as long as the rectangle is horizontal. And we just need a single hole through the middle. So, And I bet you can guess what that's going to be. That's right here. It's a different one. I said I was going to try something different this time. As for what size this needs to be, it kind of depends on what size sword you're making, really, or just the kind of look you want. So what you can do as a good rule of thumb is whatever size your figure's hand is. And this is my hand armature right here because uh, I'm not done with the sculpture I make that I actually made this sword for. So here's his bones. <laughs> what I did was I um, just measured the width of the hand and I just kind of doubled that. So this one is 20 millimeters wide. I am measuring in millimeters just because for tiny stuff it's more accurate. It's just a lot easier. Um, you can make it bigger. So for example, for the same size sculpture, which um, I think he's about 10 inches tall, 10, 10 and a half inches tall, something like that. Um, this is a good size, but it could have been wider. You can go up to um, like this is 20. I could have gone up to maybe 25 or 30 if I just wanted it to be really wide. But really it's just whatever looks best for the sword. So this one is a little bit wider. I think this one is like a 25. Let's see if I can show it good. There we go. Yeah, you can kind of get an idea. It's a little bit wider. So I'm gonna make this one and then see which one I like better, just so I have another option for when he's done. Okay. okay have your hand back bro all right um that's most of i think that's all the basic stuff we need oh nope also wet dry sandpaper see i already used this one but on the last one wet dry sandpaper in different grits um the coarsest grit i have is 400 i always write it on there so i don't forget since i cut them up like this and then I have all the way up to 1500. You don't need to go up this high. Really, I think for this sword, I only used it up. I only used the 400. But if you want to get smoother and smoother, you can, you know, use all of these. Cosplay sands really easily, which is good because, like I was mentioning earlier, I find it a little tough to work with sometimes with it being so sticky. Sometimes it's a little hard to get it smooth. Once you do get it smooth, it actually smooths out really nicely. And it paints really easy, which is good. Because that is another thing we're going to need. Um, whatever color paints you want to use. So probably, you know, silver or whatever color you want to use for the blade. Um, and whatever color that we're going to... You're going to have for your guard bead. If you want to keep that color. Because you can actually paint over these if you find something and you like the shape but you don't like the color. You can easily paint over the metal. But um, you're going to want to paint that will kind of blend in with it. So I don't know if you can really tell, but the paint that I used is close, but it's not, it's not exact. I probably have a paint that would match it better, but I didn't feel like going into the closet to look. You're going to need some kind of a roller to roll your clay out. I use a pasta machine. 
and I'll tell you what settings I used and all that, but otherwise you can just use any kind of clay roller, whatever you have to flatten this out. And to get a uniform thickness, you can just use a deck of cards and just, you know, stack cards up on both sides and then put your roller across it and that'll make sure that you have an even thickness all the way across. Also, we'll need some liquid clay. Doesn't matter which one you get, but um, we will be needing some kind of liquid clay to help the clay stick. I'm gonna just use this one. Um, this is just regular translucent liquid sculpting. If you wanna decorate it, got some crystals. These are actually hot fix crystals, so they heat set. I like these for clay work because while the clay is unbaked, you can just press them in while the clay is unbaked. And then when you go to bake the piece, they'll just automatically fuse into place and you don't have to worry about gluing them on later. If you want to put them in areas that aren't clay, like I have this one on the metal up here, then you'll have to, you know, glue those on afterwards. So also tweezers if you want, or one of these little wax gem picker upper thingies. I like these much better. But otherwise, I think that's all the basic things right there. So basically, you need to choose how long you want your sword to be. So, um, I figured out how long I was going to make mine, basically, by just uh, taking a ruler and I put it you know, next to my figure, since really his sword's pretty much going to be just on his hip. So I just took the ruler and measured how far down I thought it looked like it should go, and then how high up it should go. So, I ended up with... Roughly 10 centimeters. It's a little bit more, like 10.2. And that's really just with, you know, once you get everything else on there, but. Really, how long you make the sword is up to you. So just decide what will best fit your size figure or your ball joint doll or whatever you're gonna make this for. And so here's how we're gonna do this. Once you've decided how long you want it to be overall, you can even make it slightly shorter because our wire is really not going to go all the way to the tip, which is one of the reasons why I say to use the cost clay because this is definitely going to be a weak point because there's nothing in it to, you know, kind of keep it protected. So, all right. Your wire is only really going to go about to here doesn't come all the way up into the tip. So it'll be something like this. And then it does go all the way to the end of your bead. So you can decide how long you want that to be. So for me, I'm just gonna take this random Sharpie and mark it here so that way I know where to cut it can make it a little longer a little shorter doesn't really matter doesn't have to be exact and be careful when you cut this because like I was saying it's really really tough so just gonna find that little mark I'm gonna I think I'm gonna make it slightly bigger just a little tiny bit okay so I'm gonna hold it like this this way, once I finally cut through it, the pieces don't go flying and stab someone. <sighs> I'm gonna push it against the table, and then sometimes I'll rotate it a little, and then do it again, and then rotate it, and when you rotate it, just try to keep it straight, and it makes it a little bit easier. To cut it if you got it lined up. So now I'm gonna kind of put this in my lap so I can hold it and push down into my lap. And I can do it a little harder. And uh, there we go. 
All right, so the little cutoff end, you can stick that to the side, use that for something else. And now we've got our proper sword length. There we go. Okay, so now that you got that cut, the next step is to decide how wide you want your sword to be. Um, this blade is about um, six millimeters wide. Take my caliper and check it. Yep, 6.2. So I'm going to go with the same size. You might want to do something bigger or smaller. So, but just decide how wide you want it to be. Now, here's the thing. You don't want to try to make this too wide. That's why I'm showing it like as a broadsword. You don't want it to be like some really wide blade because of the way we're going to do this. For something like that, I would use different materials. But, you know, just to make this little simple sword, this is what we're going to do. So I'll take your foil tape. Pull this out. And just cut a piece while we figure out how much we actually need. There we go. And that way I can't get this out of the way. So basically what you can do is take the width of the hand plus the width of the beads. So 6 and 6, that's 12. The width of the hand is 10. So that's 22. And overall, minus 25. So I just added a little bit of wiggle room. So you can do the same thing. Just, you know, whichever size bead you use. I used 6 millimeter beads. You can actually use smaller ones. They don't have to be 6. Or you could use bigger ones. I probably wouldn't go smaller than a 4 millimeter unless you're making a smaller sword than this. So like for this size, I would say use a, like a four or five or a six. Probably could go up to an eight too, but you know, you get the idea. So I'm going to measure 25. And let's get a different color. I have a pink one on top. Now I'm just going to mark off that 25. So you don't have to make that exact. It's okay if it ends up like more than that measurement, but that's just giving you a good, just a little good space. So then this will sit on top of that, like that. Okay, so then you can see, if you want to, you can mark this again above this bead, and then that will give you your blade length, and then you can kind of get an eye, see if you like that or not. See, it'll come out about the same, it looks like. Now that that's settled, next thing you want to do is, now that we know what this is, can measure it or you can just kind of line it up where if it's cut fairly straight. So let me just cut that torn end. All right. So instead of breaking out the ruler again, I'm going to use my line, slide this down, take my pencil. And mark where the top of that is. So I know this is where the top of my wire is. That will also let you know where um, the base of the point of your sword is. Okay, so now this is the part where you need to know. Just bring this all the way across. So that way we can use an edge later. It'll be much easier. Okay. So now figure out the width of your sword. I said mine is um, about 6.2 millimeters. It could be wider um, if you want something more narrow. For this size sword, 
I probably wouldn't go less than four millimeters. If you just want to be on the safe side and make sure that your sword is actually going to be six millimeters, you could add a little bit to it because you probably lose a little bit of, you're going to lose a little bit of, um, of the width. Once we um, go to the next step, it might shrink a teensy bit. So if you want to bump it up a little, if you definitely don't want it to be any more narrow, you could just bump it up to seven. You know, just add a millimeter to it. But I'm going to just stick with the six. I don't care if it gets a little more narrow, so I'm just going to stick with the six. Okay, so here's our blade. And now we know this is the base of our wire. And now we just need to decide how long you want your point to be, pretty much. You can do whatever you like. If you're not using cosplay, be careful about how long you do this. Unless you're using something really tough like epoxy sculpt or some other kind of two-part epoxy putty. Those are usually really, really, you know, really, really strong. So you really don't have to worry about it shattering in case you drop it or anything. So if you want to really make sure your point is centered, you can measure again. And since mine is six wide, you can just count over three and just move up somewhere else. Count over three again and connect the dots. Do something like this. And you can't even look at it. See if that looks about what you want. If not, you can go pointier. Okay, and then once you've got that done, just want to cut that out. Do this as neatly as possible to keep your edge straight. See, there's like this little wrinkle in the back. Don't worry about that. In case your tape does that, foil tape does tend to have these little wrinkles on the back. It won't matter. Okay. That's what we got. Flip that over. So now we're going to take our wire with our mark on it. See it down there. And uh little blade and this is still in the armature stage because we do need to still put clay on this but you'll see what I mean okay so be careful because this stuff is really sticky and you don't want to accidentally rip it so now what you want to do is you want to take this and you want to place it on your little cutout here. And this is one of the reasons why I say to use music wire because it's typically really straight. It won't have gotten bent up while it's in the store or while it's being shipped to you because it's such a tough wire. So you'll be able to lay it down perfectly in the center without it wiggling all over the place. All right, and that's that. And the next step is to just cut a piece um, again. Just cut it wider than, um, you can cut it wider than the sword to make it a little easier because we are actually going to pull the tape over here and do the same thing again on this side. So if you want to, you can cut it out exact and stick it to the back and try to line them up. Or you can just cheat a little. And 
just gonna tip this. Get a rough idea where that point is. Make sure you don't put that down, sticky side down. Especially if you're working on foil, a foil surface, because it will stick and then it will just, the foil will rip up and stick to your tape. And then you'll have a giant nightmare. And once I can get the backing off of this tape, come on. Now. Cooperate with me. Okay. Then you just want to do the same thing. Make sure you line it up. bottom and then just make sure it's backed all the way to the top okay and you can press in on both sides of the wire just to make sure everything is adhered good okay it's also a good time if you decide you like like that with better you can add another piece on top of that, but it might be a little hard to see if you do it this way. Uh, I think when I did that one, I just cut them both at six millimeters and then sandwiched them, but I just wanted to show this way. So then you can take your scissors, or if you want to, you could even use your craft knife and trim it to match. And trim it as neatly as you possibly can, because you want your sword to have a nice base to be built on. And there we go. And you got your blade. That is the base. And if you just want to get an idea of what it's going to look like, you can take your flat little slide bead, slide it on there. See? Not bad. So I'm looking at mine and it looks like it's off. So that means when I put it on, I probably put it down too low because it's coming down. Yeah, see how short this is now? This needs to go all the way to the end. So it's not a problem. If that happens and you see that you don't have as much space down here as you think you're supposed to, so you can see. It looks okay, but then gotta remember. This goes here. And get back here, please. This goes here. And you see how much shorter that got? And because this still has to go here. And that's not enough right here. Okay. So if that happens, just trim it. It'll come off. So I'm just going to line mine up. I marked it, so I don't know how I still ended up putting it in the right, you know, in the wrong spot, but it's all right. Then you just do it again. There we go. Just put another mark where you need it to be. And since this bead's not as thick as this one, it doesn't have to be in exactly the same spot. But just to make things simple. So then you just take your scissors and you just clip it on both sides where that is and then you just rip it off okay and then just clean off any that's left behind and you're good if you got a little bit that's still trying to cling like I got back here you can just take your knife and scrape it away. There you go. 
Okay, now we've got our blade. 